Every day of this trial, there's been wall-to-wall -wall media coverage, and TVNZ is no exception. One news reporter, Simon Bradwell, has, like Catherine Clarkson, been here every day. It's been a tough assignment given the restrictions on reporting. Some, of course, are still in place tonight. But with a reporter's eye, he's watched the comings and goings, the reactions. Again, some of which he hasn't been able to talk about before. Now, of course, he can't. Simon, you said something to me yesterday. It stuck in my mind last night. You said this was like a Shakespearean tragedy. Yeah, and no, that's actually not my phrase, Mark. I mean, it's, it's a great way to sum up what we've seen here, but that's a phrase that people here have been saying. I've been talking to people in the queue. Sometimes that queue had 100 people in it, some mornings queuing to get into the public gallery. That's a phrase that several people said to me. It's even actually a phrase that one of the lawyers said to me. In fact, he went on to say that Shakespeare would probably have rejected it as too unbelievable. But what the point was he was trying to make was that if you like, you have kind of a ruler who is the Brian Guy figure, and he's he's ruling over an estate, and he has these two rival heirs to the estate, and it's how he dealt with that and how the situation developed from that. And even the Crown kind of alluded to it in their closing address to the jury. Ben van der Kolk said that uh, Brian Guy had the floor of fairness. And uh, that sort of had a little Shakespearean overtone to it. You always talk about these Shakespearean characters having these tragic flaws. It is so hard not to be impressed by, by Brian Guy. And you say the, the, the floor of fairness. And particularly out here where we're standing right now after the court, after the, uh, the verdict today, he came out. And look, we're just going to play you a, a bit of that now because it is, it is just so impressive. This is Brian Guy just after the verdict. This verdict does not bring Scott back. It does not restore a father to his son, or a husband to his wife. It does not restore a son and brother to his family. Our lives have been altered forever. At times, the pain of our broken hearts is almost too much to bear. However, through this tragedy, we've learned a lot, most, mostly about ourselves what we stand for, our values, and what's important to us. We've learned what is important as a father to his children. And although that father cannot be replaced, we know that with strong community and family support and values, that there is hope for the future. What's important as a father to his children? I mean, he is the living example of that, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I just think about the courage that it took to do that. I mean, the bravery of Brian Guy then and the rest of the family to walk out, uh, not just after what they'd heard in the last hour, or what they've sat through in the last month, what they've gone through in the last two years. I tell you what, you really have to just take your hat off to them for their, their honesty, their, fair, their fairness. They've been unfailingly polite to media when we're probably the last people that they want to see here. Uh, even the defence team sung the praises of the guys. They have just conducted themselves in such a courageous and admirable manner. You were talking before, Simon, about when you arrive here each day, the people who turn up, because this... Uh... A cult following isn't quite the right word, but you know where, where I'm getting at. There were people who, who would have the same faces you would have seen every day. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I was doing a, a cross here this morning for breakfast. I was here before 8 o'clock. There was people that had beaten me here. And um, one lady who was a regular face here had come in from Trentham, which is, you know, sort of 25 minutes, half an hour's driveway. Yep, there was definitely some of the same faces here every day. Just as uh, amazingly, you had people who had taken annual leave, you know, to come down and watch a court case. You had people bringing... Annual each... leave? And you leave. You had people bringing their kids down in the school holidays to see what was going on in the uh, the court. You had some school groups coming down before the holiday started. I've never seen you know that sort of level of interest. Um, so yeah, pretty amazing, really. What do you put that down to? Number of things. I mean, there's that Shakespearean aspect that we we're talking about. There's no doubt about it. You've got the law school just down the road, so there's some pragmatic reasons as well. You've got law students coming up to see the master Greg King in action. You've got some people coming from farming backgrounds. Uh, and I do think, and I talked about this a little earlier, but I think the emotions that we saw on display as well. You're sitting in that courtroom and you're there as a reporter, you're there to do a job, you separate yourself from it. But there must have been times when you couldn't help but 
feel uh, the, the emotion in that courtroom? Absolutely. I mean, you know, you had Anna McDonald on the stand. Every heart in the courtroom went out to her. You had Kylie Guy. Everybody, you know, felt very desperately sorry for her in tears. Within seconds, sometimes, of taking the stand, she would be in tears. That's how upset she was. Hey, and let's not forget you and McDonald in this, too. There was one time in the trial uh, when Anna was talking about how idyllic their life had been just before the murder. The guy broke down. He was genuinely upset. He was as close to me, uh, you know, he was sort of six, eight feet away from me, and there's no doubt in my mind his distress was absolutely genuine. He was deeply upset. Now, this was the same incident we, we talked to Catherine about before, where, where she flashed him a smile as, as, as she came in, and he sort of sat looking for the next 15 minutes, waiting, waiting for the next one. Yeah, he wasn't prone to a lot of emotion, that's fair to say. I think he'd been quite well briefed on that. We were only allowed to film the accused for the first 15 minutes of the day, and I think he knew if he got through that, he could start opening up a wee bit uh, with the emotion. So for the first 15 minutes, he was pretty much head down. I think he'd been told to take some notes, keep himself busy, that way the camera wouldn't be on him. Um, and occasionally just, you know, the, the clouds would pass and there'd be a little smile when his wife was giving evidence or something like that, or if one of his mates was talking about a hunting trip. He actually perked up quite a lot when they were talking about that. Listen, I want to bring Catherine Clarkson back in. We've got Simon, of course, the, the observer, the journalist observer, and we've got Catherine, of course, who's been watching it as a lawyer. But there, I think there's some things that, that both of you have seen in common, and, and one of it is, comes back to the evidence in this case. You don't think there was a lot there? No, there was hardly anything that they could hang their hat on, literally. And that became, as Simon has said, very apparent in the early stages of the case. And so we got up to the point where, what are we doing here? And it was the circumstantial evidence that they really spent a lot of time on. And even though I would say that they got through that hurdle, there were still the other elements of the crime that had to be met, and we didn't see those come through at all. Simon, you felt, I mean, I think I was reading your blog, there's a, there's a lack of, there was a lack of evidence in this case. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. I mean, you've got a murder case here, no eyewitness, no murder weapon, no DNA to speak of. Now, Anybody can tell you that is going to be, that's a hard, hard sell for the Crown. So on the evidence, or the lack of evidence, really, you've got to agree with the verdict. Hey, look, can I, one of you may be able to clear this up for me. The puppies. The, 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 it was on the front of all the papers, there was all this talk of the puppies. That, that didn't actually seem to... Did they feature at all in the, in the case? They did feature, but don't forget you're dealing with uh, an item here that nobody knows what's happened to the puppies. You can't produce the puppies and say, ah, this is what happened to them, and you can't produce photographs of what happened. They're a mystery. They're a mystery like so much of this case, like the dive breeds, a mystery. Your final thoughts on this case. What, what, are you, what, what overriding impression have you left with? after today's verdict, Catherine? Well, I think that for the public, they've got to have an exposure to the court process, and that's got to be a good thing as opposed to a bad thing. It's not as stuffy as people think it is down at the High Court. Simon Bradwell, your final thoughts? Well, it's been an incredible month, I have to say. I've never covered a story like it. I, just really today, my heart does go out to the, the Guy family, you know, and Kylie Guy in particular. I mean, her anguish in court today, that just, I think that sent a chill down everybody's spine. That was terrible. And it really did just remind everybody that there's lives at stake here. And, you know, you just really have to feel so desperately sorry for them. And I really, really hope they can move on with their lives. Well, I don't think any of us could have summed it up, Betty, as our thoughts are, of course, with the Guy family tonight. We appreciate you joining us. Catherine Clarkson, thank you so much for your observations. Simon Bradwell, thank you for yours. We'll see you tomorrow night. For now, though, that is New Zealand close up.